All right, everyone. Aubrey here again with another kiln opening. Um, it is Sunday afternoon and this has mostly spoon rest in it. Um, I didn't have much else to put in here. My brother made his own cup and glazed his own cup and that's on the bottom shelf. Um, and my nephew did the same. So um, excited to see what those look like, but this is gonna be mostly spoon rest. So you might be bored, but they're still pretty. So, um, the kiln is cool enough, but not quite cool enough for bare hands. So, I got a little bit fancy with my uh, stacking in here. I don't know if you can see, I guess this one is sitting on top of two posts and then I've got a half shelf and anyway, I was a little bit nervous about that because I don't normally do that. Um, it looks like it turned out okay. Let's see that one out first. So I've got a lot of these because this is my favorite glaze combination. It is, um, oh, it is Mako Black Walnut on half and then uh, Snow on the other half and it does this speckledy teal thing uh, when they meet. So, a lot of those. Mm, love it. So pretty. Another. I post. And some cookies. I used a lot of cookies to make one of them higher so I could fit another in there. <laughs> Um, okay, there's also several of these and I need to clean up the kiln wash off of that, but it is snow and ancient copper. This is speckled clay, which is why the white looks speckled. Otherwise it would just be solid white, but that's always a good one too. And again, every single time I use ancient copper, does not matter what clay I'm using on because I use I have used it on several different types of clay and it always tings for a while. I don't understand. Another. So much kiln wash. Get to uh, sand all the bottoms of these to make sure they're smooth for countertops. This one looks nice. I like the, this one kind of deeper. I need to make more like that. I like it. Okay. So, um, that thing where you wipe the excess glaze from all your brushes onto a piece. Um, I did that on one of these spoon rests. I can't tell you what all's on here. There's a lot on here, <laughs> but that's kind of cool. Looks nice. It's very, it's got a lot, but it looks cool. I like it. There's a the light hoop. Cool. No complaints from me. And then, um, I think this is stone denim. y'all know is my favorite. Okay, cones. Cone five and six. So this is what I normally get to. So I don't know why it got so hot last time, but this time it got to like a five and a half, almost a six. Okay, I gotta get some shelves out. Goodness, that one is kiln wash flaking everywhere. Okay, here's another stone denim. And then some satin patina, which is a new favorite of mine. So pretty. This is speckled clay. Again, all of these I think are speckled clay, which I'm finally making stuff with white clay. So you'll see some of that coming up, but I'm trying to get rid of all this speckled first. Okay. Posts. 
Okay. <clears throat> so the bottom shelf got quite a bit hotter. I don't know why. So the bottom shelf got to a true cone six, it looks like. I don't think I um, put the cones in my cone pack like straight, like I'm supposed to. I think I maybe tilted them wrong, but it still gives me enough of a reading that I can tell what I'm getting to in there. Um, this is an ornament that I made with one of my handmade stamps. I don't know if you can see the Oklahoma on there, but I put like a wood grain pattern. Um, and this is ancient copper. I like it. Stay. Um, the rest, this is just a uh, cotton tail stroke and coat on speckled clay. God, there are so many spoonfuls in here. But we're going to be set for the festival. I sold out on my last one, so. A couple more satin patina. So, so pretty. Okay, I did some um, testing in here. My Mako White Gloss. Oh gosh, I think I finally got it right. Okay, so if you read the uh, labels for Mako glazes, um, it kind of gives you a um, specific gravity to go between, which is like 1.47 to 1.51. And I was kind of closer to the 1.5 area before. Um, so I added quite a bit of water and I got it closer to like 1.45 <laughs> um, and I wanted to test it and I see zero issues on this. So I'm thinking that Mako White Gloss likes to be thinner, like watered down a little bit more. And I just did a three second dip. I'm determined because I've got 20, like a whole five gallon bucket full of white gloss that I would love to use because it's so much faster. Um, but I, I'm gonna try a cup in it now because it looks good. And fingers crossed, prayers. Um, I used some ornaments kind of as testers for some glazes that I haven't really used on their own yet. And I have some textured plates that I'm wanting to use. Um, don't know what to glaze yet. So this is Mako's Sapphire and I did three coats, maybe two would show texture a little bit better, but you can still see some of that texture on there. So that's Mako Sapphire and then Mako Peacock, which looks really cool. It looks great on texture. It goes peacock. These are like celadons. It's cool. I like it. And then the last ornament. This is Norse blue because I hadn't used Norse blue really. I bought it to do some combination glazes, but I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, so Norse blue, it's okay. I probably won't. I probably won't you can't see the texture as well as I hoped. The peacock looks good and one less coat on the sapphire would probably look good. Uh, a little bitty. <laughs> My nephew painted a little flower. We'll put that on the magnet. Okay, the moment for, uh, so my nephew, <laughs> he calls it his Dr. Seuss mug because it is wonky. <laughs> I'm going to take it inside, fill it with some liquid, make sure that it holds water and <laughs> that this handle stays. Um, it seems all right, but I don't know. Anyway, this is just speckled clay with satin patina on it. And he glazed the bottom, so I had to put it on stilts, but it worked out. His Dr. Seuss mug. 
so okay, and my brothers, he was go. Oh, he's not gonna like that. Okay, he was. He spent some time glazing this. Um, he used stroke and coats, and he did. Um, I think two base coats of stroke and coat Irish Luck, and then on top of that, he did some camo. Uh, he painted some camo on there. Um, but you can't see any of the camo. It's just green with black on the inside. That's just tuxedo. But I mean, it's a nice cup. <laughs> it just, you can't see any of the hard work he put into it. He's going to be a little bummed about that. He glazed the bottom as well. So I, uh, put still, but he made his own handle and that cool. Yeah. Well, I'll have to break the news to him. I think it still looks nice. It's still a nice cut. It's just not what he wanted or what he was going for, but that's okay. He can try again. Okay, that's all that I had in here. It didn't seem like much, but there was just a lot of spoon rests. So um, I am in the shop throwing today. I, am, I threw, um, I'll just show you. I threw 10 sponge holders. Those are currently drying. Um, yesterday I threw six um, pumpkin mugs and I added handles to those just a minute ago. Um, they're sitting in my damp box right now because I'm gonna do some slip trailing on some and then add some leopard underglaze decals to make some more of the patchwork ones. Um, and then I'm probably gonna make, if I have time today, <laughs> make some more of those um, sweater texture mugs cause they're hit and I want one. So we're gonna try and make some of those. Uh, I also have these plates and I have one mug over there, but all of those Christmas plates are drying. Um, there's just a lot going on a lot but I'm enjoying it and um, I guess I'll just see you guys in the next video if you haven't yet please subscribe to this channel so you'll be and hit the little bell so you'll be notified whenever new videos come out um, and I'll be seeing you guys very soon so have a good one bye